Hello everyone and welcome back to Penguin Crafts. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous Christmas gift bag. Yes, I did say Christmas and it is August, but you can't resist it when you see this paper. It's absolutely beautiful. So I've used one of our stunning DSPs and I've created a little gift tag as well. Um, using actually the Daisy Delight uh, punch, but I think you can use that for any occasion, just change out the colours. So if you'd like to see how to make this little gift bag, please keep watching. So you're going to need your scoreboard and a few different bits of DSP and cardstock. So the DSP I'm using today is from the Be Merry collection. Um, I've got that here. This is one of our items that's carried over from the last catalogue. Um, so if I just flick it through for you, absolutely gorgeous. I know we're in them August, but why not, eh? Why not get a Christmas one done? So as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. That's lovely. So you get 12 pieces of double-sided DSP, um, and the one I've got is Christmas trees on one side and red on the other. So your piece of DSP, <coughs> Sorry, needs to be 11 and a half by 12 inches. If you're doing a pattern, like I am here, the short side needs to be the correct way up. So as I've got it, so the 11 half needs to be the way of the flow of the pattern. Okay. You're then going to need um, a scrap bit of cherry cobbler for punching out our flowers. Um, a piece of garden green that is 2 inches and we're going to sort out the length later. And a piece of whisper white or scrap cardstock that is... 3 and 11 sixteenths by 3 and 11 sixteenths. So we're going to start with our DSP. So on the short side, we're going to score at 2 and 3 quarter inches. Ooh. 2 and 3 quarter inches. <clears throat> 5 and a half inches. 8 and a quarter inches. And 11 inches. Okay. You're then going to rotate it round, and when you're doing this, we want to be scoring the bottom of the box. So again, watch your pattern. So I'm going to rotate it to the left, and then I'm going to score at two and three quarter inches. Okay. So hopefully you can see that when it's the correct way up. I'll turn it over maybe better. The score line is at the bottom because that will perform our base. Okay. So that's all the scoring we need to do. So grab your bone folder and we'll do some folding and burnishing. Just be careful with this as it is DSP so it is slightly thinner so we just need to be careful. And I've just remembered we've got one more bit of scoring to do. Um, I have forgotten so I'll grab that in a second. So just be gentle with it, it will go. With this edge one just fold it by hand first and work your way along because you don't want to rip this when you when you burnish it, okay? So just be gentle with it. Okay, so that's that. And then you do need your scoreboard again, sorry. <coughs> and that little scrap bit that is 3 and 11 sixteenths by 3 and 11 sixteenths, you need to score a half an inch on all sides. So just keep rotating and score at half an inch and this is just going to create our base so we're going to get a reinforced base as the item we're putting in is quite heavy okay. so again fold and burnish this all the way around on each side and okay, so now we're ready to do our cutting so grab your scissors and this is if you're making a normal box just snip and just wedge them in slightly. It doesn't need to be too neat as it is completely hidden. Um, so don't worry about that. But I'm still going to wedge them in because I'm a perfectionist. So all the way around, just wedge in. You don't have to, as I've said, but go around. And make all your little tabs. Okay, so you should end up with something that looks like that. Then grab your DSP. And we need to cut out this little bottom section here and just wedge in there. Okay. And then just cut up that line as neat as you can, as again, this will all be on show now. Okay. 
And then I am just going to wedge off a slight bit of that top section. You then need to cut up each of your score lines at the bottom, just to the line. glue it together and make it into a little box like that okay so we'll do this first so put glue down that strip so I'm going to use fast fuse and I'm going to put that all the way down close to the edge and come back and put a second layer just to make sure and then all you need to do is fold over your box and line that up. Okay. Then you need to make your base, so fuse on all the corners. And just fold that together. And that will, I'll just open this up, it's just slightly smaller than the box, so it'll fit perfectly in the bottom. So what you need to do now is work out which is the back of your box. So where your seam is, that's the back of my box. So this is the front. So we're going to be able, we're going to be folding in the sides, then the back, and then the front. Okay. So I'm going to put a fast fuse on the bottom of one of the sides. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is insert this into there. We'll go in slightly tight because we've made the dimensions just so they fit. Oh, I've stuck it too early. So just slit it, slot it in there and line it up just like that. And then press that one down. Okay. So then I'm just going to, you don't need to this, but I am just because it has got the heavier in. Again, on the other side, put a bit of glue. And again, remember which one's your front, so back in first. Oh, it slightly hangs over there, so I'm just going to trim that. Okay. And then this is the final one, so this is the front, so make sure you get your glue right to the edge on this. Okay, so there is the bottom of our box pretty much made. I'm just going to put in our gift just to, and as you can see, it's pretty sturdy, it's going to be fine. So that's why we've done that reinforced base. Okay. So the next thing we need to do, again, sorry I've taken it out, is we will need to just find your front, again, so there's my seal at the back, push in until you see them coming together and just pinch. Just run your finger gently down the side and it will go, it will go. And again on this side, just gently push it in just to create that shape and pinch at the top. Okay, so you've created this lovely little bag shape. So if I put my little gift in now and pinch, you can see it just, just beautifully fits in there. Okay, it's tight but it does just fit. Okay, right in the top there. It just fits. So we need to do a little bit of punching. So as you can see, it's very tight at the top. So we're gonna go right in the top corners. So I've got my uh, little punch. So all I'm gonna do oh, is uh, push it together. And in the very top corner, just make sure you've got everything lined up. In the very top corner, I'm just going to punch 
okay and the same in the other one just in the top corner okay so there's like technically you can see that two holes and it's gone all the way through okay so we'll leave that for one side for a minute and now we'll make our tag so we've got a spare bit of cherry cobbler that was at least um how wide does this need to be? Well, it needs to be able to fit the punch. So how big is that? So it needs to be probably two and three quarters. So all we're going to do is punch out two of the daisy punch, uh, using the daisy punch. I know it's Christmas I'm doing, but I think as long as you use the appropriate colour, this punch works with everything. Okay. You're then going to need your tag topper and that bit of, cob uh, bit of garden green that we cut to two inches. Oh, we haven't cut this to two inches. What have I cut it to? One second, I've done that wrong. Let's grab my um, trimmer. So this should be two inches, and it's not for some reason. So, there you go. So, garden green, two inches. Slot it in, and punch. And as I'm sure you've seen, it creates this gorgeous little top. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit of stamping, just one item. And we're going to be using a sentiment from the Better Together. And we're going to be using the Merry Christmas here. So let's grab that. And a little block. This is a B block. So I'm just going to line up the stamp on my grid paper here. It's the easiest way to make sure you get it straight. Okay, so we're going to stamp that at the top of this. I am just going to trim this down a little bit for now, just so I can see. And we're going to stamp it right at the top in the centre. So I'm going to grab my basic black. Okay. And then when it's using these archival pads, you need to tap and twist. Okay, and that just makes sure you've got full coverage. I'm apologising now because my head will probably go in when I'm doing this. So I'm just lining up my bit of paper, uh, cardstock, sorry, with the vertical line here so I know that's straight. And we've aligned my stamp as well. So yeah, my head probably will go in this. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to clean this um, as it will stain if I don't. So grab your stamp and scrub and some um, stamping mist and just give it a little clean. Okay, so we're now ready to grab our garden green ink pad. No, we're not, we'll do that in a second. We will first do a bit of rounding so grab your burning folder and your punched flowers and just curl them gently back on themselves okay so just work your way around each one and bend them back on themselves exactly the same on each of the two punched flowers okay so we're now going to stick those together. I've got some dimensionals here. In fact, we'll use a glue dot to put them together, actually. So we'll stick them together using a glue dot, and then we will use a dimensional to stick it to the actual um, tag. So just line them up so they're opposites. And then we can see now how big our tag needs to be. So I'm just going to grab a pencil and do a little mark. So somewhere here. Oh, I've dropped my flower. And then grab your trimmer. And just cut it roughly where you put your mark. Okay. 
Now, I'm going to use an item that is retired, but you can get these from anywhere. Um, they're really great, and this is just a corner round, and I think it just finishes off the tag nicely. This is a one inch one, as I say, it is retired, but it is worth getting one. I'm just going to neaten that edge up, I went off slightly. Um, but yeah, it does, I think, just finishes off project, uh, project properly. So, you're now going to grab your garden green ink and one of our dabbers. Ink it up and we're just going to go around the edge and just add a little bit of colour to the edge. Just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that it's just added a little bit of colour to it. So, <clears throat> grab your dementia and your flower. Oh, it's moved. gonna stick it on to our tag and I've got some of the silver faceted gems so we're gonna grab the big one and stick that in the middle okay I'm also gonna grab some of our small ones here and just gonna put a couple on here just on the end of the little lines okay so that's our tag made we've got our gift bag so we now need some ribbon to tie it so today I am using the 1 8th of an inch um, silver ribbon hopefully you can see that so all we need to do is make sure you've got a point on it that makes it easier find the front of your bag again so this is mine and feed through from the back okay in fact that was a bad idea completely ignore that feed through from the front put in our gift and then we can pull it tight and add our gift tag okay so just slide your gift tag on and then we're just going to tie this As you all know, I'm not great at those. Just going to trim those a little bit. Okay, and there we go. There is a beautiful gift bag with a little gorgeous gift tag ready for Christmas. As usual guys, all the details will be linked below, um, so just go down below and you'll see the links to my blog, links to my Stampin' Up! page and links to the shop. Um, I'll also leave some details on my email address in case you'd like one of the new catalogues that will be out very soon, which is our autumn winter catalogue, with some more exciting winter Halloween and other themed gifts, which will be absolutely great. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you.